It is an honor, and always an honor. Amen. To come to Mount Zion. I love the name of this fellowship. It's Mount Zion. Because when you come to the Mount, you'll always be climbing up. Hallelujah. I just want to encourage the church this morning. You know, the psalmist said it this way. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And this word here, and all that is within me. You know, we've got to learn how to bless the Lord with all. Just one day. Just for one hour. We come together. To bless the Lord. With the music like this and the worship like this. I don't know how many of you are. I don't understand how some of you can just sit. It must be a common thing. It's not a feature thing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But listen, I want you to know today. Even if this is your first time, that God has ordained this moment. Some of you, it's all like strange. Looks crazy. But let me tell you, this is the start of a crazy, wonderful, crazy journey with Jesus.
mind to his original intent. It is not just saving people. Not just saving people. Not just saving people from their sins. But to save people from their sins and to leave the kingdom of God here on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. So I want you to go with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 36. It's always good to be here in Genesis. Because that's where the original plan began. You know, it was amazing. It's amazing to know that after God created the world, then in 26, he spoke to himself and he says, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. I like this about the God that I serve. He did not make man first, he created the world first. Then he made man. That shows me the God I serve is a God of order. Amen. 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 He plans things. Things don't just happen. My God plans stuff. And he says, let us make man in our image and likeness. I want to suggest to you this morning that the purpose God created man was to reflect his image and his likeness here on earth. Amen. Amen. To put it in today's language, that you and I look like our God. So when I see you, I see your God. That means if they want to see what our God is like, all they gotta do is come to Mount Zion. Yes, yes. That's why I told you when I start off, you know, you gotta to learn to just worship God because people come and they want to see God. They come and see you. That's why He put us on earth. He could have saved us and taken us to heaven. But that was not the purpose he created man. He created man to put man on earth. That we reflect the image of our God. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Which simply means you look like God and you act like him too. There's a perfume that was uh, put out in the market a few years ago. They call it contradiction. <laughs> I don't know what's a talk about, but contradiction. <laughs> you say something, you get something else. It doesn't go together. God's original intent was to put you and I on earth to reflect who he is and what he is like. Can you say amen? Amen. amen? amen. That's why the early believers in Antioch were called Christians. They were first known as followers of Christ. But the people in Antioch looked and they saw people looking like Jesus and doing what Jesus did. That's why they call them Christians. Small Christ walking around. I don't know what people say when they see you and me. Amen. Before he ascended into heaven in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, he told the apostles, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. 
Baptizing them in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now teaching them, verse 20. To observe all things. I commanded you. So that time there's two purposes. One is to reflect his image and his likeness. You know, when men sin in Genesis, in Genesis 3, the Bible says God came looking for men. I want to tell you this morning, he's still looking for men. He has not stopped. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And then he came looking for Adam and Eve. And he started calling out, Adam, where are you? The Bible, the Bible tells me, Adam was hiding. Oh, man. That's just like us. When we mess up, the first thing we do is hide. Go down, don't do more. Just turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, I hope you're not hiding. Hey, tell the other neighbor, I hope you're not hiding. See, that's men. That's men. When we mess up, we hide. But let me tell you, God still comes down looking for you. Because he Clothes made out of leaves. 
They cover themselves with leaves. Now in verse 21. After God judged them. Listen to this church. The Lord God made garments of skin for both Adam and his wife and he clothed them. See, that may not be a thing to you once you read it, just the first time you read it. But God did something amazing. I told you he started doing restoration right there in the garden. This is what God did. I'm going to take those leaves. Let me tell you something. When they see and when we hide it, we like to dress ourselves up to cover, to cover up. Fijians, smart to cover up. Thomas don't know how to cover up. Then this is what God said to them. I want your camera. Take it off. We come to lead home to worship God. We want to take away whatever the cover is. He wants to do an exchange. And listen to this. This is what he did. The word of God says. He clothed them with animal skin. That means, right there in the garden, he had to kill an animal. He had to skin an animal so he can clothe the nakedness of Adam and Eve. My Bible tells me in Hebrews, chapter 9, without the shedding of the blood, You can come to church for so many reasons. You can come to church because you're related to the pastor. You can come to church because your friends come to church. You can come to church because there's nothing to do on Sunday for you. But listen, nothing will happen until you come to the cross. Jesus Christ, 
When we accept him as our Lord and Savior, his blood now runs through our veins. Amen. 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 You get that? When you come through the cross, that's why you need to come through the cross. That's why you need to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Because only there and then, the process begins for restoration. Hallelujah. And his blood now flows through your veins. You may be a tongue. You may be a tongue. I may be a Fijian. You may be an American. Or you're tongue, American. <laughs> But listen to this. We are brothers and sisters, sons of God, and daughters of the King, because now His blood runs through our veins. Now, let me tell you this. That means His DNA runs through our veins. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, you see my grace, eh? Can you stand up and turn because there's some visitors here for you to Okay. When you look at her, both the father and the mother are in her. Yeah. Some people say, oh, she looks more like the mother. Some people say, it looks more like the father. But both the father and mother are in her. That's why she's pretty. <laughs> Because their DNA runs through her. Listen, when you come to the cross of Calvary, when his blood runs through your day, listen to this, automatically, the change happens, people begin to see something different about her. Not because of the makeup, it's because of the DNA. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now you decided to look like your God. See, that happens instantly when you come to the cross. Hallelujah. But God says the purpose is not only the image. Now the likeness. This is where the discipleship comes in. This is where you need to sit down and be taught. Amen. Amen. Listen to me, church. Even if you don't invite me next time, I'm going to just tell you it now. <laughs> this bit, the lightness bit, is the hard bit. This is where you need to sit down and to be taught to act like God. This is where plenty people find another church. Because they don't like to be taught. Jesus said to his apostles, teach them everything, all that I commanded you. Mind if I teach you a bit today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shake the hand of the person next to you and say, That's why God brought you this morning. Amen. Amen. Tell the other people, That's why God brought you to. Don't smile. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when you know, you must do it. When you know, you must do it. When you do it, that's when you get the tick. You get the tick? That's what they say, just do it. Don't talk about it too much. Don't complain. Just do it. Don't make excuses. Just do it. Don't cover up. Tell your neighbor, just do it. See, this is where we have the conflict. You're looking so Christian right now. You're looking at me. You look like a very good Christian. <laughs> but I can tell you this. You're struggling within. There's a conflict happening within. See, because you have a new heart. 
We are new creation in Christ Jesus. So all things have passed away. The scripture says, Behold, things become new. So you have a new heart. Hey, can you say, Amen? I have a new heart. Amen. Amen. You're a new man. But this is the struggle. The new man with a new heart. Walking around with an old man. Praise the Lord. That's why there's a conflict. Two step forward, one step back. Three step forward, two step to the side. You know what I'm talking about, right? You know what we're talking about, right? It's good to be in church. But Paul said there's a war raging within. Because listen. The spirit man, the new man, the new heart, connects with God. Draws to God. That's why no matter where you were last night, you had to come to church because the spirit man is drinking God. Now the flesh, the Bible says the flesh, always has the pull to sin. So you need this God and that's why there's the conflict. Though I went to Kabi last night, oh now I love the Kabu and the ball. Sacrifice when there's no altar. 
No matter what happens. If there's no altar, there's no sacrifice, there's no renewing of the mind. The heart is changed. God has done that's a done deal. Now he wants your body. So do you know why God won't come down? And force you and force your body. He says, present your bodies. That means you come and you bring your own body. You can't force your wife. You can't force your husband. You can't force your children. When it comes says, you present your own body as a living sacrifice. That means I have to make sure I have my own altar. Do you have an altar? Now, let me give you another information. Fire don't fall on empty altars. That means I may have the altar, but there is no sacrifice on the altar. I don't care how many colors you see. Sorry, I did not come. Oh, I made it Sorry, I did not come to make you feel good. I came to deliver the word of God. I don't care how good the present worship is. If there's no sacrifice on the altar, no matter what you do around the altar, fire won't fall. Fire won't fall. Fire won't fall. Fire won't fall. Until you come, come bring yourself to the altar. Don't just stand by the altar. Climb on the altar. And says, Lord, I'm offering my body to you as a sacrifice. That is holy. That is acceptable. Not to the pastor, but to you. See, this is what happens when sacrifice is on the altar. He will send the fire, and the fire burns up all the sins and the cross. So when you come out of the altar, Hallelujah. Amen. You're ready to do His will. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll shake the hand of the person next to you. I hope you heard that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, verse 2 says, Can you read it in a tongue? He says, Do not be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, there's two words there. Conformed, they look alike. Conformed and transformed. The prefix is different. Okay, The first word says C O M, conform. See, there's a form to his image. Amen? Amen. Amen. The corn is this. This is what corn means. <laughs> you pretend to be what you're not. That's where the word comes from, man, for woman, for Christian. And this is what he says, don't copy the world. Can I tell you the church this morning? The world does not set the standard for us. I'm going to say it again. And this is not very popular now in the church. But the world does not set the standard for everything. The world says, look, if you want a new man, if you want to be with the Lord, 
If you're going to be in the image of God, if you're going to be in His likeness, you cannot copy the world. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Do not copy the patterns of the world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let me explain to you. When you get on the altar, Okay, when you get on the altar, when he sends the fire to burn up your sins and wrongs, in the process, listen to this church, in the process, Christ gives you his mind. And you can say, now I have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And it says at the end of the verse, when you, have the, when you have the mind of Christ, and you begin to get out of the altar, Listen, and you begin to now follow the will of God. You begin to do the will of God. Hallelujah. The word of God says, then you will begin to see how good, Amen. Amen. how pleasant, and how perfect the will of God is. Because listen to this. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We will never be able to see what God sees with your own sight. That's why he says, listen, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. And as you get on the altar, You are going to see that you are a blessed person. 
The word of God says, even people that say things about you. How do you know that you can stop people saying things about you? But the word of God says, when you're a blessed person, when people don't say things about you, God rises up in your defense. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. And then he says, we're well, only blessed. He says, now you want to be fruitful. You will multiply. That means, listen to this. That means no lack. No lack. That means you cannot give an excuse. That is lack. And he says you will be fruitful and multiply. There will always be the overflow. And he says you're going to be like God like this. You're going to subdue. That means this. Listen to this church. When you are sick, before you run to the doctors, you can tell the devil you have no right to touch you. Yes. You can tell the sickness where to go. You don't pick up the phone and tell your neighbor, oh, I'm sick. No, you tell the sickness. You have no home over my life. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. You subdue. And it says, you know, when you subdue, you can have dominion. You cannot have dominion if you don't learn how to subdue. And this is what it says at the last. You will rule over. Hallelujah. That means you are an overcomer. Hey, say amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are But you can say to yourself, 